Hello, uh, in this video we're going to look at vectors and plots in MATLAB slash Octave. Uh, of course, we'll be focusing on Octave in this video. Um, so one of the things that is really important to know about MATLAB is that it operates uh, on matrices, or it was designed really to work with matrices. So if you look at the word MATLAB, it's actually uh, short for matrix lab. So just as a definition, when we work with matrices, now matrices are just a bunch of stacked vectors. Um, a vector, as we're going to define it in our use with Octave, is a single row of n values. So it's oftentimes given the dimension 1 by n, meaning it's one row and n columns. We always go rows by columns. So that's a, a vector. We're not actually going to formally use matrices in this video, but uh, a vector, if you think about it, if you stack a bunch of vectors together or more than one vector together, you now have a matrix. In fact, a vector itself is in its own right a matrix, but uh, we'll skip the semantics on that. So you can, uh, it's really using, working with vectors, it provides a kind of a nice way to store data, um, sequential data, non-sequential data as well. It's pretty easy to create a vector. So we can, in MATLAB, type in this line of code, say t equals 1 colon 10. What that does is it creates a vector uh, of integers starting at 1 and ending at 10. Now, sometimes you don't want to go in increments of one. Sometimes you want to go in other increments. So by default, if you just list the start, colon, stop, that will give you the integers from the start to the stop. However, if you want to change your increment, you'll have your start, colon, your step size, colon, your stop. Okay, so start and stop are on the left and the right, respectively, and in the middle, you list your increments. Kind of a strange way to do things, but that's the way it works. So let's hop over to Octave and do this. So here we are in Octave, and I'm going to go to the home screen, and I can type in t equals 1 to 10. And uh, you'll see right away that, uh, I'm going to clear this out real quick. All right, so uh, t equals 1 to 10. Don't need the spaces in there, sometimes it's just nice to show uh, for visual purposes to do that. And you'll notice that right off the bat, we get a, in, the, in our bars space, we get a variable called t, and if you hover over it, it's a matrix. So it's a 1 by 10. Notice uh, it's a vector in this case because we've created a single row of 10 values. You can click on that. Uh, well, it doesn't show you the actual listing of those values. But now I can actually go in and type in t. Okay? And so now I can see what my elements of t are. Well, let's suppose that I want to go in here and I want to reference a particular element inside of that set. The way you can do this is in the following fashion. So we want to access the elements of a vector, and the way we can do that is whatever our vector's name is, in this case we're using t, we use t parentheses, and then in here we replace this uh, less than index position greater than with the index value that we want. So indices always start at 1 and end at the length of the vector itself. Let's hop back over to octave. So notice that if I type in something like t of 1, that's going to give me the first element inside of the t vector. Okay, so it's going to tell me, in this case, it's 1, because the first element inside of the t vector is 1. I can do something like t of 7, and that's going to give me 7. Now, if I had defined t to be uh, starting at 1 in increments of 0 0.5 all the way up to 10, first of all, that's going to spit out a lot of stuff because I didn't suppress the output. If I put a semicolon at the end of the line, it wouldn't have shown me the actual elements inside of t. Now, this is 1 by 19 uh, because it starts at 1 and goes in increments of a half all the way up to 10. You can clearly see that. So now, if I access, for example, t of 7, uh, that's going to give me a value of 4. Well, if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the seventh element inside of the t vectors is the value of 4. Another thing that we may want to do is we may want to create a new vector out of these data points. So let's say that what I want is perhaps maybe like the square of these elements. So what I'm hoping to do is really create a new vector from an old vector. And uh, so suppose, again, that I want a vector with the squares of t equals 1 to 10 increments of 0.5. So basically, I want a new vector that just squares every single element inside of t. 
Well, because you're working with vectors and we're not working with just real numbers, I mean, we're working with a vector of real numbers, but we're not working with a single real number, you cannot simply write y equals t squared. Uh, you cannot square vectors. A vector is an object, uh, but you can do what's called element-wise squaring. So you can take the elements of a vector and you can square them. Now, if this is not an important distinction for us to make here, but it is an important distinction in general. Uh, there's a difference between vector multiplication and, uh, and, and scaling the elements of a vector or element-wise multiplication. But we're not going to make that distinction here. Just know that whenever you're squaring the elements of a vector, you've got to use dot uh, caret 2. So this is certainly not something that you need to memorize because if you do type in y equals t squared, you're saying take uh, vector t, square it, and assign it to the variable y. Well, I'm going to get an error. It says for um, x to the a, a must be a square matrix. Um, use dot, a dot caret for element y's power. Okay, well, it gives you the correction. So if you do y equals t dot caret 2, uh, now watch over here in the variable workspace. Now it creates a vector called y, and because I didn't put a semicolon again, it reports all the values. Uh, but you can see that if I come over here, well, 1 squared is 1, 1 and a half squared is 2 and a quarter, 2 squared is 4, and so on and so forth. And now I have uh, a t vector and a y vector. If I want to come over here and say, well, what's the seventh y value in that, that value? Then I have uh, y is 7, and that reports 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So for some reason, I want the ordered pair. Uh, corresponding to the seventh element, I, I know that 4, 16 is the, uh, the seventh ordered pair in that sequence. One of the main reasons why we do this is because we may want to plot the data. We want to do something with that data. So it's very easy to plot. Uh, if you have a vector called t and a vector called y, you always list your x values first and then your y values. If you flip-flop them, then it's going to plot um, your y values on the x-axis and your t values on the uh, y-axis, which isn't a problem, but if you do switch the order of these, you'll notice you'll get uh, a sort of a, a funky looking graph. Okay, so we can simply do plot t comma y. So here I am, I'll type in plot t comma y, and I get a very, very basic, ooh, um, what's going on here? Let's try that again, plot t comma y. And there we go. So that just plotted the t values against the square of the t values. And a fairly, you know, nice looking plot. You can actually see the points in there. There are lots of features to the plot uh, function. I'll just show you one. If I want to, for example, change the color, I can do things like, oops, I can do things like uh, plot red. Uh, nope, I'm sorry, it should just be R. Okay, that will change the color of the graph to red, and I can do B, and I will do, do BL, I think. Um, nope. Uh, I can do Y for yellow, uh, not very nice looking, but I can also change the symbol. I can do, uh, if I do single quotes dot single quote, and that'll just do a dot plot. I can also do things like star, and that'll plot stars, or uh, just different options many, many different things you can do with the plot function. Okay, so um, if I want to add features to my graph, for example, I want to title it, I want to add axes labels, I can, uh, before I actually start accessing features of that plot, now this is uh, where things get a little more complicated, but we're going to just sort of avoid the complexity. Just know that if you're going to add features to a, something you've just created, a plot or a figure, uh, you've got to type in the command hold on. So it's like kind of like, hold on, I'm not done with the graph yet. I'm not done with the plot. And now following the hold on feature, you can list out what you want to add to that plot. Okay? So if I want a label for the x-axis, I'll do x label. And then inside of the parentheses, I'll do uh, quotes to encapsulate what I actually want the label to be. So maybe t comma years. And then the y-axis label, I want y comma population. Then I can also do this thing called title, the title of my graph, single quotes, name of the graph, or single quote. Um, and then also, this is not necessary, but there are lots of other features to plotting. But what this does is you can change the font size. Um, so don't worry about what all this stuff in here means. And then once I'm done, I will type in the command hold up. If I don't do that, you're going to get what I uh, originally got when I clicked plot t comma y. I had old data lingering around. I forgot to click hold off or type in hold off in my last graph, 
And so basically you just start adding things to graph. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna plot in, uh, type in plot t comma y. And all right, that's the plot I want. So now I'm gonna type in hold on. If you don't type in hold on, you're gonna get weird results. Uh, X label, uh, t years, I'm not gonna work too hard on this. Um, okay, there it shows me another rendition of the graph now with uh, the X axis label. And now I want to do Y label, single, uh, open parentheses, single quote, and call it Y comma population, uh, close the single quote, close the parentheses. Now it shows another iteration of the graph. Now I want to title it, and I want to say population over, over time, and I can plot that. And now I'm done with the graph, so I will type in hold off. If you're writing this in a script, of course, I always recommend doing scripts. You, uh, at the end of your script, you type in hold off, and when you run that script, it will generate this graph right here. Okay, so I'm just doing this in the command prompt, which is very efficient and not a good way to be able to go back and reproduce exactly what I did without having to punch back in all those lines of code steps. All right, well, what if I want to graph multiple functions on the same plot? Let's look at that next. So, um, what I would do first is I would plot t comma y. I would click hold on, and now I can do another plot command. So now maybe what I want to do is I want to plot t versus 10 times the sine of t. Uh, notice I didn't create a new vector. You don't have to create a vector. You can just say 10 times the sine of the t values, and that will generate basically just the vector in order to be able to plot it. But in order to actually access the elements of that, you might have to call it like you know w or something t to find w equals 10 sine t. Notice I have a multiplication sign. You can't just do 10 sine t. Uh, it has to be 10 times sine t. And then I would kind of go through my same thing. And here's the cool thing. I could actually do a legend. And it doesn't have to be in this particular sequence. Uh, X, I could do legend first, and then X, Y label, and then X label. Um, but what I do in order to create a legend to be able to distinguish the graphs is I create parentheses. And then the, there's a comma here. And the first thing that's in single quotes is the label that I want to give the first thing that I plotted comma, the second set of single quotes is the label that I want to associate with the second thing I plotted. So if you had five things you plotted, you would have to label them in sequence, otherwise um, you know, it would be confusing. Okay, so I do the same thing, blah, blah, blah. I pulled off at the end. Okay, so here we go. So uh, we're gonna plot t comma y. There we go. There's my graph. Now notice it's a brand new graph. It doesn't have the labels anymore because I clicked hold off. I, I wrapped up that, that, uh, that graph. Now I am going to type in, hold on. And now I'm gonna type in plot t comma y, uh, uh, sorry, 10 times sine of t, close that parenthesis. So now it's gonna show that graph on there as well and automatically it, it chooses a different color. So that's kind of nice. Uh, of course it has like kind of little lines, right? Because that's, it's only creating, it's basically connecting the dots, and the dots are based every 0.5 units, so sine looks a little, a little bit more um, robotic looking. And um, now I can do things like X label, I'm just gonna say, X, keep this short, Y label, um, and call that Y, keep it short, title, whoops. Ah, see, misspellings cause problems, Y label. And now I'll do title, and I'll just say Y versus X. That simple. And um, now I want to do legend. So the first thing that I plotted was the graph of uh, t squared. I'll just do t squared since that's what I'm looking at in the blue graph. And then the red graph is 10 times sine of t. Notice that I'm using single, uh, single quotes. That means I'm creating a string. It's creating a string. It's not actually doing any operations, just creating the string to display 10 times sine of t. All right, so I type that in, and beautiful. I've got this nice little legend here. It even does t squared. You know, I could do some more formatting on this, but I'm not going to worry about it. So now I know which graph is which, and now I'm done, so I can click hold off. Done. Great. So that's basically how we do those basic uh, plotting operations, and that's why we use vectors. So the next um, sequence, we'll look at uh, iterables, and we'll look at some of the things that we sometimes need to do in order to actually generate them.